<laughs> so yeah, Calvin, uh, welcome. Uh, tell us about uh, your role and your on the board and why you're here today. Yeah, I'm Kelvin Hipperson. I'm um, Executive Chief Information Officer for Royal Cornwall Hospitals and Cornwall Partnership Trust, our Community Mental Health Trust. And I've recently joined the board, um, Integrated Care Board. I've been working with the ICB since it first started, really leading on um, a digital strategy, uh, the role of digital supporting transformation across the county. Do that from the position of running a number of services within the provider organisations. We've a, we have a large shared service called Cornwall IT Services that provides most of the IT kit and, and systems that, that people use across the county and a couple of smaller services that actually support some of the more specialist work in uh, CFT and, and the ICB. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of interesting points from uh, to <clears throat> this morning's board meeting. Uh, can you talk to me a bit about the winter plan and what, uh, what that entails? Yeah, the, the winter plan is a really important part of, of, of our year, actually. Um, although, interestingly, I think we often say within Cornwall, we don't just have a winter, we have a summer challenge as well. So we have to be prepared for, for both. But, but of course, in the winter, many more people uh, are, are poorly and need a lot more support from, from the health system. Um, so the winter plan is a big part of preparing all of our services, having everybody ready to actually respond to those, those big challenges. And as we were discussing in the board today, it feels a little bit as though winter has come early. Although the weather's been kind to us, people are and, and challenges are kind of arising already. So we've had a long conversation this morning around responding to those challenges. Important discussion in the board in terms of actually saying we don't feel like we're quite quite doing enough in that space at the moment. And we're going to come back to it actually at the next board meeting in terms of how are we really making sure we've got everything in place that we need to respond to the challenges that we know are uh, are growing and coming. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I, I hear that you're often on call, uh, which obviously uh, takes up must must take up your evenings and weekends. Uh, what does that entail when you are on call? Yeah, um, so so all, all the executives across all the organisations have have a role in on call arrangements. So we all work together in terms of making sure that over the evenings and weekends uh, that our services continue to run as they need to, um, and, and inevitably. Um, for, for me as somebody, I'm, I'm not in the clinical side of things, so I have to work really closely with um, our colleagues who, who are running those services and make sure they're getting the support that they need um, when we do run into, again, the sorts of challenges I talked about in terms of um, uh, uh, the, you know, the winter pressures. You know, we know we've got challenges in terms of ambulance holds at the moment, supporting flow of patients through the hospital so we can get them home. So that takes... For me, actually, I should say it's a really interesting part of I'm here to actually help support transformation across the organisation. So working in that kind of a close operational perspective with colleagues is really helpful to the work I do in terms of their needs to, to, to move things forward. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, we had mentioned uh, this morning about the uh, p performance report. Mm. Uh, can you just tell us a bit about what that covers and why the board in particular would, are interested in it? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's very similar, really, in the sense to the, to the uh, winter discussions that actually we're measuring performance every single month, um, looking to see if we're meeting the standards that we need to meet. And as I was saying around the winter plan, a long conversation around yeah, we're not we're not where we need to be in terms of meeting those uh, standards. So we're going to continue to do a lot of work to make sure that we can make the changes that we need to 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 actually get to where we need to ensure that the services are delivering what's needed for the people of Cornwall. Brilliant, thank you. And um, finally, um, I know there's a story that resonates with you. Um, so yeah, please, uh, this is your opportunity just to tell us about Susan's story and uh, travelling yes. from the islands. Yes. So um, so every month we we hear stories from people across Cornwall in terms of how they receive services and, and the challenges, or, or actually also the positives. Susan's story today really resonated with me. Um, she was describing how difficult it is to get to uh, to services on, on the mainland. Um, you know, a very long journey for her. Um, I think partly why it resonated is, is actually in sessions where I've talked about digital transformation, I've talked about how long it takes to get from, from the islands as an example. So to hear, hear an islander really describe it and, and the challenge it was for her um, shows that we, we do need to be providing more of these digital services. So to, during COVID, we introduced um, uh, what's known as virtual consultations, where you don't necessarily have to come into the hospital. Um, you can you know, converse through a video link. Those were used a lot during COVID, but we don't want to stop using those services where they help in those sorts of situations. So if it saves somebody traveling, 
um, um, it absolutely, absolutely helps them. It actually helps with our green uh, agenda as well, because obviously it drives a large amount of travel across the county when people have to travel all over the county to get to, to health, health appointments. So um, we're really keen to make sure that we hear stories like that so that we can show and work with clinical colleagues to make sure they continue to offer these services and try and, try and grow them. Um, about a third of our outpatient appointments are done virtually at the moment. And I think we feel, um, we feel there's probably a lot more opportunity and demand there. So we really want to hear from people and, and do talk to your, you know, your clinicians when you see them in terms of if you want to make use of these sorts of services, let them know, because that's what tells us about, about those, those services being needed and wanted. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Karen.